Well, hey, uh, welcome to, uh, sorry, I was moving a chair out of the way. Welcome back to Miss Ar Raga's art room. Okay, time for two-faced draw along. All right, what we need to do first, this video here, is to set up our drawing paper, okay? So you should have your photo to work with, your drawing paper, scissors, a pencil, and a glue stick, okay? First thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna trim out our photograph. We're gonna go nice and tight right around the border, kind of like we did for um, upside down drawing. Except this time we're not gonna draw it upside down. All right now this is our last component of our portraiture unit. And here we're gonna attempt to draw a human face using traditional proportion guides as opposed to gritting out our photograph to do the drawing. All right, so just a little bit of a different technique, hopefully, right, similar result. Okay, so there's our photograph. What I'd like you to do next, is you're just gonna kinda center the photograph in your sketch paper. Let me shuffle this over to the center, speaking of. You're gonna hold, and then you're just gonna lightly draw with your pencil right along the border of the paper an outline. Just, ooh, sorry guys, I just bumped the camera. Just like we did with our upside down drawing. This is how we set up the sketch page. Oops, it's okay if your line gets a little wrinkly, no biggie. There we go, so now I've got a border outline to follow. Can everybody see that? All right, now what we need to do is we actually have to create the two-faced. We're gonna cut our gentleman's face in half. And here's where I want you to go. I want you to cut straight up through the chin, straight up through the middle of the mouth, through the middle of the nose. We're gonna kinda go at an angle up the nose and then straight up through the center of the hat. Okay, so here we go. Kinda go up through the chin, up through the mouth, up through the center of the nose, and then straight up through the hat. Okay, oh you lucky ducks. I know you're looking at it. You're going, oh please, we're gonna draw the little side. We're gonna draw the little side. Nope, we're gonna draw the big side, okay? <laughs> I know. Hey, we gotta have some fun with drawing, right? So, go ahead, flip your paper over. Grab your glue stick. All right, and then let's put some glue. Right, ooh, gosh, I'm thinking. I probably shouldn't do that on my sketch page. Careful, don't, don't get glue on your sketch page. That'll make it hard to draw. Sorry, you should probably do that in a separate area, but for the sake of the camera, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna glue my picture down. Get it good and stuck. I got little corners that are still picking up. Pull extra glue on them. Make sure they really stay sealed down. There, that, se that seems actually pretty good and stuck. Oh, that corner's coming up a bit. Put some extra glue on that. Mwah. Okay, there we go. I always like to make sure my corners are good and stuck. Okay, woo, perfect. We're all glued down. And now we're gonna hang on to this other piece of picture because this is gonna be our reference and we're gonna replicate this side of the face over here. Hence the name of our sketch, Two Faced. Final note, please slip your paper over onto the back. Write your name. Okay, and then whatever your block or class period is. So right, if you're, you know, 1A or, you know, 2AB or 3 or 4, right, you know what I'm saying? Write your, write your class period or block, okay? I always write sample, okay? And then we're gonna get started now that our paper's all set up with Too Faced. Join me at the next video. Hi ladies and gents, welcome back to Miss Raga's art room. All right, so today it's time for two-faced draw along. First, we're gonna start with the contour outline and then we're gonna take it to the shading. Now, instead of using the grinning method like we did for celebrity portraits, right, which we learned is a valid Renaissance technique, um, we're gonna be using um, a proportional layout, okay, using just a system of lines and dividing the face in half. So what we're gonna be taking is we're gonna be using one half of the photograph and we're gonna be recreating the other side, hence two-faced. And in the end, hopefully, end up with something like that, okay? So grab whatever pencil you've got, 
okay, to start your layout with. Um, usually I'd like to shade with Ebony, but for just sketching and laying out our lines, a regular old number two will do just fine, including for um, a you know, mechanical pencil, okay? So first we're gonna start by defining the back edge of his shoulder, where his ear is, where the back edge of the hat is, and then kind of work our way in and down, all right? So using your photograph, go ahead and take your pencil, line up its, let's make some marks. Let's mark where the back edge of the hat is. Let's mark where, like the top of that ear is. And I like to really heavily use my photographic reference to kind of give myself a little map of lines. I call it playing the game of connect the dots. That's where that hair is going to poke out. So I'm just making a series of marks for kind of big, big areas on the outer edge of his face and his jacket. So I kind of know where to draw my lines. And I actually just kind of keep lining the photograph back up as you can see. And I'm creating just a little, a little path to follow. Take some of the guesswork out of it. Do you know what I mean by that? Right, I don't have to guess where that line is. I'm going to heavily use my photograph. Line my pencil up and make some measurements. This is a precursor to a technique I'm going to teach you called sighting or enveloping. Okay, so now working from this half of the photograph, it makes it a little bit easier for me to kind of figure out, oh, you know what, I want to mark off too, where like the corner top part of that hat is. And in addition, make sure I got that mark for where it ends in by the ear. There we go. Okay, now I'm ready to go. It's gonna come in. It's like that top portion. Yeah, that comes in here. And then a little bit of the ear coming down. Line that back up. Right, and just always go back to your photograph and check where you see things happening. It's mark two where that hair kind of pops out too. And voila, there is kind of the back outline of his head. All right, now working from top of his head to bottom of chin, we're gonna mark out kind of where the basic ends of the face are. So let's mark in bottom of chin. Let's mark in how wide the chin is. And we're also gonna mark in Kind of the side of his face here, this jawline. And we're going to def start defining where the outer edge of his face is, right? But using this method of just marking off different points on the face, you could absolutely kind of start anywhere. You know what I mean? It doesn't, it wouldn't have to be you know, just where the, the ear is or where the, the hair is or the hat. Okay. Now, working from the bottom of the chin to the top of the head, you'll notice an interesting measurement. The eyes fall approximately halfway from the top of the head to the bottom of the chin. So we're going to divide the face in half. This is going to be our rough eye line. Okay? We'll also notice that the nose falls about halfway, the bottom of that nose falls about halfway from the middle of the eye line to the bottom of the chin. So we're going to also mark in that measurement, right? So from like top ahead, we kind of keep dividing the face in half. Same thing with the bottom of that mouth. It's about halfway. Okay, from the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin. 
Okay, so we figured out our eye, our bottom of our nose, and our mouth line. We're also going to figure out roughly, okay, where the eye, how wide it is, how it falls. Now, there are two ways we can do this. Okay, we can either line it up with the photograph and just put in some little marks about where the eye begins and ends on that line. Oh, I've got to angle that line a little bit more. It's got to go at a little bit more of an angle. Okay. But here's the other neat thing you'll notice. The eye is approximately one eye's width away from its partner. So you, can you all see that? So that's another interesting measurement that we use. We can also figure out that the nose, check out where the edge of the nose ends. It ends basically from the corner of the eye straight down. Now we can check this with our photographic measurement and I can also just draw it in from the picture. I also know that the mouth, this is a neat thing too that happens in portraiture, and this is averages, this is not everybody, okay, in the world, but the edge of the mouth ends about directly in the center of the eye there. So let's grab our pencil. Whoops, twisted my paper here. Sorry about that. Sometimes I get a little overzealous with the picture. So there, our corner of our mouth, pull that out again. Check it out. And it's just about directly in the center of our eye. How neat is that? One final measurement. You'll notice the ear is pretty big. It goes from just about the bottom of the nose to just above the top of the eye. So we're going to draw some lines out that show where the bottom of our earlobe ends. Look at that, right in line with the bottom of our nose. And where the top of our ear is, just above that eye line. Or it should be darn close. And there it is. Check out how big the ears actually are. Don't believe this, actually feel it on your own face. Put your thumb at the bottom of your earlobe, put your pointer finger gently at the top, drag it around the front of your face, and it's kind of, it's crazy, my ears are actually a little bit bigger than that even. So now we have a nice map of where the features are going to go on the face. Let's continue on with some contour outline work. All right, so I'm gonna start putting in some basic pieces of the hat here. I'm gonna put in the corner of this bill the bill and brim of the hat. I'm going to sketch in from the front there so I know it's got a nice a soft curve to it right up to that point. And then this part of the brim comes down and over. And then this part of the hat comes off to the side. I've got this little corner piece of folds down and over in a triangle. Let's see where that triangle ends. Right, you can always line your photograph up, put it right over the top. You don't have to guess. Use your photograph as a good reference. Getting a good reference image can really help your drawing. That and just the more practice you do, ladies and gents, it really is like a sport or musical instrument. The more you work at it, just the better you'll get. I'm going to put it in the basic line, this kind of shadow we see in the fold of the hat and also the fold and wrinkle and line at the top of the cap as well. Okay, that looks good. Excellent. All right, now, so here's a shadow underneath. Let's start putting in the back edge of where the hair is and then we'll start working towards the features and some of the folds in the jacket. All right, so let's take some more measurements. I'm a big fan of working from photographs. I'm just not one of those people who can invent things in their mind. Now, I mean, the more you practice this too, ladies and gents, the less you'll need to depend on, you know, taking measurements directly off the photograph. Now I'm going to treat the hair as one shape to start with. I'm not going to treat it as individual or spaghetti hair. You know what I'm talking about, right? I'm not going to worry about individual strands. I'm going to worry about 
the hair as a basic shape. We always work big to small in here. Right? We're never worried about the teeniest tiny details until we get the big basic shape right. And I make mistakes all the time when I'm drawing. So go back and check if you're like, man, that just doesn't look right. Line it back up on your photo. The odds are there was like a little mistake there or something, and that's okay. That's how we improve our drawing is by going back and checking and making sure that we're doing good observation. Awesome. All right. Hey, you can see that face is actually starting to come together. Okay, so here's my ear. I'm looking like I'm matching all my proportions pretty correctly, which is great. It's funny, his ear goes even a little bit bigger, doesn't it? That's crazy. Big ears. Right? That's part of what makes us look like us. Is These are kind of average proportions. These are not exactly how everybody across the planet looks. It's part of what makes you look like you. All right, I'm going to start a little bit on this eye here. The eye kind of has a basic football shape to it. I can see his eyes a little bit more rounded at the bottom. We actually see only part of the iris. Do you notice that? We don't see the full iris. The lower eyelid and the upper eyelid is covering a lot of it. We do see the pupil there, right in the center. He's got a nice little highlight. Here's the corner of the eyeball and where it ends with the tear duct. Now his eye looks really small right now, but watch what happens next when we start to add in some of the contour lines of the fold of the eyelid. And I'm also going to put in some of these beautiful wrinkles. Believe it or not, wrinkles actually make it a little bit easier to draw somebody because it gives a shadow detail to draw. So I'm going to put in some of those really nice, beautiful wrinkles. Gonna line my photograph up again. You see what I'm seeing? Kind of comes up and meets the center, and then this fold line comes down. We've got this really heavy shadow line. I'm gonna draw that heavy shadow line in now as well. And then I'm gonna put in just the basic shape of his eyebrow. Right? I'm not worried about individual hairs right now. I'm just gonna put in those basic shapes. Terrific. Done and dusted. Looks good. Okay, let's put in the bottom little fold of that nose there, the outer fold of the nose. I'm going to just mark in where I see of the top corner of that fold happening and the outer edge. Just make sure that I've got my measurements accurate. It never hurts to check. This kind of curls in and that's all we see of the nose. Get out of the habit folks of drawing in like a hard line here on the side because we really don't see that. Yes, we see a shadow and we'll make that appear with shading, but we don't really see a hard, hard line. All right, let's come on down to the lip here. I'm going to finish off, whoops, a little Cupid's bow here. I'm just going to mark where like there it is, boom, and where top peak of this little cupid's bow is. And it sounds a little crazy, but we're going to draw just in the top and then only a little line to represent the bottom or the lower part of the lip. That looks better. I thought that was a little high. And I know the lip is going to end just about 
out to this corner. He's got an ever so slight smile. It's really lovely. Just notice a couple more wrinkles there. And then we're gonna rip, draw in just the bottom edge of the lip there. Okay, there it is. I'm gonna erase some of my guidelines here. I don't need them anymore. I'm gonna draw in this fold I see from the cheek around to the corner of the lip that shows that kind of slight smile. Got some nice little wrinkles and folds here in and around the mouth. Okay, let's go for some of the detail in that ear and then we'll put in some of the contour folds of the jacket. We'll start shading. Okay, we'll get our shading tools out. All right, so I can see in the ear itself. Let's, let's line up and make some marks again. Let's make some marks for where we see some of these big shadow shapes at the fold in the ear. So we see this curve kind of come down and in. And I find just the act of drawing to be really, I don't know, relaxing. Just, just focused on drawing this one thing right now. Don't need to think about anything else. Just looking at that shadow shape. For me personally, it, it quiets the mind. Actually helps me to think. Sometimes I feel like I think a lot clearer after I've been drawing or painting or really doing anything with art. I'm sure many of you feel the same way after, um, after practicing a sport or a musical instrument. You may feel the same way about drawing too. All right, so I put in just some of those lines for the ear folds. Okay, and now to put in just a couple of these folds in the jacket and we'll start our shading. All right, so let's, uh, let's mark in where the neck is. Line my photograph back up. Okay, we'll mark in where the fold of the collar is too. Right about there. Okay, and that's, that's about what I see of the neck. Then I see these other jacket folds to come around and up and over. Down. Over and in. This way. Sorry if I trail off sometimes as I I'm like not one of those people who can chew gum and walk at the same time. Sometimes I like I like fade in and out. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. And then put in this last kind of jacket fold here. It comes out. It looks like in the photo we might be wearing a scarf or even something like that. But it's a little it's a little tricky to see in in here. And I'm just gonna just represent with a couple of quick little lines where I see some folds coming off and happening. All right, and there it is. There's the contour outline of my drawing, okay, that I'm ready to shade. All right, so let's get to the shading part. I'm gonna pause the video here, I'm gonna get some supplies, and then we're gonna start to shade together. Hey, ladies and gents. All right, I'm back. So it's time to do some shading. All right, so shading tools, well, um, it, it kind of depends on what you got at home. All right. Now, if you're drawing with me in class or you've got your shading supplies with you, hopefully you've got like a chunk eraser, needed eraser, 
chamois cloth. Love these guys. Um, Tortillion, and of course you know me, I love Q-tips for blending. Remember, you can turn your Q-tip into a little bit more of a custom blender by picking some of the cotton off of one end of it and then retwisting. And that way you've got kind of like a more detailed side, okay, and a fluffier side, okay? So that's an option. Um, if you don't have any of these tools at home, okay, Ah, and of course, how could I forget? An ebony pencil for super darks. Um, if you don't have any of these tools at home, you can use cap erasers. Um, paper towels work great twisted into blending stumps. Um, tissues work great instead of chamois cloths. Most people do have some Q-tips at home. Okay, you can even take computer paper and twist it into a blender. That works really well too. Oh, I know what I forgot. Hang on one second. I gotta go grab a shade guard. There we go, shade guard folks, right? If you don't have a shade guard that I've given you, make sure you grab yourself some scrap paper out of the recycle bin or um, from wherever, right? Because you don't want to smudge your beautiful drawing work. Rest your hand on the shade guard. Your hand will smudge across the paper and not your gorgeous drawing. All right, so I'm just gonna start working top down. I'm gonna work the face first, then I'll worry about a background tone. Okay, so um, first and foremost, let's look for some of the darkest values on the hat. And I'm gonna go in with my ebony pencil to get those. So I can see I've got a really dark shadow here, really dark shadow on the lip of this hat, um, really dark and then fading here. So I'm gonna start with, start with those. And I am gonna leave some little spaces of white for where I see the white in a fellow's hair. And I'm not gonna worry so much about the texture of the hat. I can see it's got that like pebbly texture. For this draw along, we're just worrying about practicing that beautiful shading. And as I go, now some students like to like shade everything and then go back and blend. That's just not, not how I do it. I like to kind of shade a bit, blend a bit, shade a bit, blend a bit. Now remember, no outlining, no outlining at all. We want, like outline, it's not that outlines are bad, right? We use outlining sometimes stylistically, depends on the type of drawing we're doing. But in this case, doing a really beautiful, soft, realistic pencil drawing where we're trying to recreate gorgeous value ranges. If we outline stuff, it's just gonna flatten it. It's gonna make it look less 3D, not more. So you need to make something show up more, right, if you've lost it, by adjusting the value, not outlining it. I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. All right, give that a little blend there. I can see there's kind of like a little bit of light in there, so I'm gonna go in with my chunk eraser or my point on my Eraser. Go back in and reshade around it. Nice. Okay, and then I've got really dark, heavy dark ebony in here. And then it starts to fade to lighter as I move further and further away. And it kind of fades into the general gray of this cap. All right, now I'm going to switch over a bit. I'm going to grab my regular old number two and work into some of these grayer values I see happening on the fold of the hat. Because this lip of the hat here is pretty light. It's a pretty light value, but I've got some of these grays kind of fold up into that roll. And I'm using, so if I'm like talking pencil pressure right now, I'm using kind of like, um, I don't know, like a middle, middle to light. Just putting down some gray. I 
can build up more later as needed. Again, kind of shading with the form, kind of keeping softer, rounded pencil strokes. This kind of picks up a bit too, doesn't it? That shadow kind of has a little bit of a point to the end of it before it fades out. And particularly for shading, you want to ditch the regular, or I'm sorry, you want to ditch the mechanical pencil at this point. Not because mechanical pencil is bad, it's just you are making it a lot harder on yourself when you're shading. It's much more difficult to get smooth, blended pencil. It's more difficult to build up value. Don't make it harder on yourself. Right? If you need to, come see me. Trade out a mechanical for a regular number two. Good old wooden number two, right? This, this lovely Halloween pencil makes for a pretty good shader. All right, check that out. And now I'm going to add just a little light value just in on that brim there. I think at this point, for the hat, I'm going to switch over to my Q-tip for some blending. Anywhere I go too dark, I can use the side of my vinyl eraser to adjust the value. I can use the kneaded eraser. Remember, you can clean off your blender by rubbing it with the chamois, rubbing it off on your shade guard. You feel like it's getting too junked up with pencil. Beautiful. Ooh, there's something so satisfying about shading. Okay, now I'm going to get this little fold in the hat here. It's not as dark as these shadows, so I'm going to stick with my regular number two. Give it some good firm pressure. You just can't get as dark with a regular number two as you can with the ebony. That's why I like to have both. There we go. I think I'll use the pointed end of my Q-tip there. Now, don't worry about the outline of this hat. I know what I just said was like, hey, we got to hide the outlines or we want it to look like there's no outlines. We will get to that. I just haven't gotten there yet. Okay, I'm going to go back with my eraser and just touch up any little kind of really light highlight areas we want to keep. There we go. All right, and that's looking pretty good. Add. Now this is a perfect example of where I'm adding some value. I'm not re-outlining. I want to keep the edge of this little hat triangle light. But I don't want to outline. I'm just going to add a little additional shading on the opposite side so it looks like that folds coming forward. And there's a bit of our hat. Let's work our way down. Let's work our way down onto this brim the shadow underneath the fold of the hat, then we'll kind of start working to the facial features and then I think out and around. Okay, so um, again, I'm still kind of in middle gray here on this hat, lighter, so I'm gonna do just a lighter pressure on the pencil. Put in that light gray tone that then kind of fades to even the lighter light of that edge out towards the side here. And in this case, a little bit more detailed shape area. So I think I'll go for the, the pointed blender. Do a little bit more of a 
much of a smear. There we go. Okay. And then, whew, we got a really heavy dark shadow underneath here on the face. So I'm going to get into that ebony pencil again and really get that rich, dark value where that shadow is. here and you'll notice that shadow doesn't stay super dark all the way down it kind of softens a little bit as it gets to the edge it lightens in value so I'm just gonna let that fade a bit at the edge there All right, let's start working in on this feature of the eye here, right? What do you say? We work our way uh, kind of eye, nose, mouth on the way down, out to the side of the face, ear, hair, jacket. We'll do some background. All right, so let's, let's start working towards the eye there. Um, I can see I've got some really super rich dark value right in the pupil. There's a little highlight towards the top there, so I'm going to leave that blank. This eyelid has a very dark underside, including right at the corner of the eye there as well. And it's very, it's very heavy on the lid also, and it goes really dark into this corner. Okay, now the outer edge of the iris is dark as well, but you'll notice it goes lighter in value kind of towards the middle there. We're going to leave that a lighter, a lighter gray, a little smudge. And we've got just this little bit of light gray and white on the eyeball there. And the eyeball itself has value too. There's very little of that eyeball that's like pure white. Very little of it, just a touch. Okay, now there's a lot of dark value in the shadow in and around his eye here, so I'm gonna stick with the ebony pencil for a good portion of these folds and then switch back over to the, uh, the number two pencil. Some of these. I'm just going to start turning some of these lines, these contour lines we did, into more shadow. There's wrinkles around his eye. And then those dark values come right up in and underneath the eyebrow. And that's part of what defines those kind of hairs in the eyebrow. It's those dark shadows underneath. Okay, at this point, I think I found most of the like dark darks, I think. So I'm going to switch over to my regular number two pencil and get in there now. I think in this case I'll use the pointed blending stump for where I'm going to smudge Another 
those detailed wrinkles. And then what I'm looking for in the eyebrow is not actually to draw where I see the white hairs, but kind of like draw or shade, I should say, the middle and dark values around them. So we keep that hair texture. Try to even shade or use my eraser to draw back in the edge of some of those hairs. There we go. This kind of dark wrinkle here. And then I'm just going to start putting in the middle tones I see around the eye and around the hair. can see we've got some of these kind of gray middle tones that come down and around the eye. Kind of the lightest parts are the white hairs of the eyebrow. So we'll leave that the lightest. And so we'll shade darker gray value around it. And then I did that with pretty, pretty light pressure. I wasn't pressing too hard with any of that. Actually, this is a pretty light corner of the eye. I'm going to lighten that corner up just a little bit. I got a little heavy there. Put this lighter in through here. Okay. All right. Let's work our way down the nose and across over to this cheekbone. So this is what I mean where I said we don't want you guys drawing lines on the side of the nose because we're going to make the side of the nose show up by just following this light value shape and some shading that we see. Right? We don't need to outline the nose with lines. We just need to follow follow the values we see. Right, so I see like a really dark value in that nostril and then coming down the front of the nose a bit. I see some shading along the outer edge of it and up into the crook of his nose here. But I don't see like heavy outlines. There's no line. We're treating it as shadow shape. Again, a lot of this observation and what you're seeing in your photograph does just take practice. I'm going to use my Q-tip to give that a little soft Soft little fade there. A 
It's a pretty 3D nose, doing pretty good. All right. And now we're going to shade in the fold of this mouth. Bring in some of our gray tones and values to the upper lip here. I should say to the skin where the upper lip is. Right, not quite the upper lip yet. This is a tricky draw along, folks, so hang, hang in there. Again, the more you practice with this stuff, just the better you're going to get. No one was ever good at the first time they did anything. I mean, maybe you were okay, but right, you, you get better each time you practice. So, so stick with it, don't give up. It's supposed to be difficult, that's how we get better. By practicing challenging new things. Okay, so now I'm gonna add some shading here where I see some shadows kind of go from here, over under the cheekbone. And I'm working with kind of a medium to light pressure because this is where the lighter values of his face are, right? They're, they're happening on the side of the face and, and the cheekbone there. This kind of cheek fold comes over and he's smiling a little bit. And down. A little bit of shading over here. There is a good amount of patience that goes into this too, ladies and gentlemen. There is a good amount of patience that you just... You have to be willing to, to just sit and work at it. And that's a skill too. That's a skill that can be learned and practiced. You know, when you feel like you can't do more and you're like, oh, I just can't, you, you need to push through and just, and just keep at it even an extra five minutes. You know, and then maybe the next time you just keep at it an extra seven minutes or eight minutes. And before you know it, with enough practice, you'll have built up that ability to kind of say like, oof, I know this is not working out right now, but it can still work. I can do this. And before you know it, that, that'll be true. You'll be able to do it. Because I am not naturally just a great drawer. I'm, I'm just, I just wasn't. Um, you do anything enough times. I just enjoyed it. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't like great at it, but I just liked it. Um, you do anything enough times, you will get better at it. And all I'm observing here in the cheek is just the shape of some of those values. And every time I learn something new, I learn, I, I do something a little bit different. You know, I see where I would change a value shape, or I see where I would change a, a line. Okay, so as I move down the side of the mouth here, oh, some of these values are pretty dark on the under edge of his cheek. I'm gonna go ahead in there with the ebony pencil and darken some of those shadows, I think. Same thing with the under edge of the nose. These get pretty, pretty dark there. I'm gonna go back and accent them a little bit. Okay, terrific. And now, okay, upper lip, whoo, super dark. Right back with that ebony pencil. Dark, dark, dark values.
And then here's what's interesting about the under lip here, the under edge of the lip is I see the shadow underneath and then I see these wrinkles on top, but this stays pretty light. So I'm going to work with my number two pencil again and I'm going to shade under the lip where I see that shadow mark. I'm going to shade up to it. I'm going to shade these little wrinkle lines, things at the top of the lip where this shadow kind of almost comes down into the fold of his mouth. Right, it's weird. We're thinking like, well, I gotta shade the bottom lip, but actually the bottom lip has a lot of light that's showing onto it. And the reason we see it is because of the shadow underneath it, which is kind of a weird, weird thing, but it's true. Like when you think about it, your bottom lip actually sticks out more than um, your top lip. And so that's why your bottom lip catches more light. It's lighter in value. Okay, just shading in some of the bottom of the chin here. Now as I look at my chin line, I'm actually noticing his chin comes up ever so slightly more than that, like there. And then this part of the neck and chin kind of starts here and then comes in that way. I had a line wrong. Woo! Good thing I caught that and corrected it. That might have looked a little funky. And that looks better already. There we go. Check that out. See? Again, the more you practice, the more you observe, the more you catch those, those, little, those little mistakes that you're like, oh, okay, that's, that's maybe why his face looked a little too wide or, oh, that's why I needed to you know, adjust that line. I didn't have the initial curve in the right spot. I learn every time I do one of these. It's why it's never boring for me, right? It's like, how do I do, you know, three or four of these draw alongs every year? And it's because each time I do one, I, I just, there's something new that I discover. Right, I'm learning how to say something a different way so that you folks understand it better. Right? We're, we're always growing as, as artists. I always think of draw alongs almost like um, musical instrument scales, like when you guys do scales or sing scales or, you know, even when you just like run drills for sports, right? It's the same drill a lot of times, but you're, you're developing something new. You learn something new. You learn how to do it fast or do it differently. It's the same. It's the same with these. Practice, 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 practice. All right, so there's the bottom of his chin. I think it's time to go over to the neck, do some work on the ear, the hair. Let's work the jacket a bit, and then we're gonna come up to the background. Okay, so looking at the neck, I do see some of those really dark values again at the neck particularly right here underneath the chin. And we even like lose neck and jacket ever so slightly for a moment there, don't we? And this fold comes up of skin. It's a real dark shadow underneath it. And then as we go to the side, it definitely like kind of fades away. So let's use some blending. I'm gonna bring just right underneath this chin into the jacket where it's really dark. I'm gonna bring that really dark value up underneath there. That looks good. Okay, and we've got, I'm gonna switch back over to my number two because I don't want, it's still pretty light on this side of his face. I don't want it to get too dark dark, you know what I'm saying? I want it to still have just a little subtle gray tone. It's actually pretty light back over here on this back edge. It's not, not terribly dark. There's just a subtle little bit of shading. 
clean off my Q-tip for a second. All right, yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty good. Let's go up into the ear. Um, where do I see some of my darkest values in the ear? Right at this corner here, where earlobe kind of goes to neck, and there's some hair and stuff happening in and around there. So I'm going to just shade in some of the dark shadow shapes I see. Give it a little, little blend. Excellent. All right. And then in and around this part of the ear. Good. Dark value shade blend. Ears are kind of fun because they've just got such cool folds and wrinkles and, and shadow shapes and values to them. There's not a ton of super dark in this ear though, so I'm pretty quickly going to switch back over to my regular number two. Give that regular old fabulous number two pencil. I'm just going to start with some regular shading in along this part of the lobe. Some shading that comes in here. There's a little bit of shading that comes down and in here as well. And that comes down here. And folds out this way. Now there's a this is a pretty dark spot in here. This is where that Parted ledge has really kind of gotten soft and lost some of its density, I suppose. Happens to all of us as we age. Okay, and then I'm going to shade in and along some of these wrinkle shapes here. Voila, that looks great. Okay, terrific. There we go. A little smudging there. Okay, let's do some work on his hair. We'll work our way down to jacket and then background time. All right, so on his hair, again, we're not drawing individual strands of hair. I'm gonna shuffle my shade guard here because I don't want to I don't want to mess with what I've shaded already. So I'm gonna shuffle my shade guard over here, move some of my supplies. And what I'm looking at is do you see how I'm not I'm still treating it as the overall shape, but I'm looking for these darker value shadow shapes in it. I'm not treating the hair like just strands of spaghetti, right? I'm looking for because this hair's light. I can't draw white unless I have a white pencil. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for just those darker values I see in there, kind of like we did with the eyebrow, to get the texture of the hair. It's kind of coming in off the face. Just drawing in that texture, edge of the hair. And where I see, and do you see how already that starts to mimic and look like hair strands. You're almost deciding more what white space to leave behind than what hair to draw. Isn't that crazy? I know, sounds nuts. But it'll work, trust me. See how that already starts to look more like hair? So we're gonna put in these 
dark spots here. Oh, it would help if I shaded the other edge of the lobe of the ear. <laughs> there we go. Got all excited about the hair. Totally forgot about that back edge of the ear. I think it's pretty light and white here in the middle. I don't see a lot of those little gray spaces. And voila, I have hair texture. I can even now, too, take my eraser and kind of soften and draw in some edges of the hair itself, too, like into where I've shaded already to kind of help create that effect. Same thing at the back of the hair, even though we haven't done the background yet. I'm just gonna look for areas where you see the bits of the hair, little flyaways, and then we'll blend the rest of this gray into the background. I'm actually almost like shading around the outside of the hair at this point. Like I'm shading around the white light areas. If that makes sense. Right, so I'm like shading outside the shape of the hair. And we'll go ahead and blend that shading into the background when it's time to do background work. See what I mean by that? May have gotten a little overzealous there. He's got quite the tuft that sticks out this way. Okay, there's some good looking hair there. All right, let's tackle a jacket. Okay, so I kind of got into a little bit of the jacket here on the back of the neck. The, the jacket is really, it is really dark, so it's time to bust that ebony pencil back out. So we're gonna look first for our areas of dark and then kind of work more towards our areas of light in the middle. And so I can see, just looking at the photograph here, I am dark, 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 all in these areas. So. I'm going to get in there with my ebony pencil. I'm going to start working first with those areas of darkest value that I can see. Now, areas where, it, you know, it's not all dark. I'm looking for the subtleties. I'm looking for the subtleties of changes in tone and value. Right? I'm not just going to blitz through the whole thing and just be like, oh, yep, it's all dark. No, no, no. I'm going to be a careful observer. We'll look for where I see those subtle transitions of tone. Right, you'll notice even in my putting in those dark values, I'm looking for areas where maybe there's some more light, maybe it's not totally dark, right? Maybe the back edge of something is a little bit lighter, a little bit darker. Right, it's not just whole hog. Oh yeah, this is the this is all the dark area and this is all the light area. No, we're looking, we we deal in subtleties. We're looking for those those subtleties where we can. take my eraser. I'm just noticing that I went awful dark on a couple of those spots. I'm just going to take my eraser and just subtly lighten those up, but then go darker in and around the hair. Just little details like that. Now you're just kind of constantly, that looks better. Now you're just kind of constantly looking at adjusting, being a careful 
from server. Very valuable. Valuable skill to have in any class, being a careful observer. Okay, and then this dark comes up and around this collar here. Very dark value, right on the edge. Then these get darker. Here we've got these kind of like little pockets of shadow too that we're going to get into. There, that looks lovely. Okay, so let's now do a little blend, a little blending, a little smudging work. Remember, smudging is not just smearing the pencil around. You are still directing that, but you are drawing with your blender. Right? You're not just smudging and smearing the work. You are taking your time and creating subtleties of value. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, there we go. Oh, you know, I've gotten a little overzealous here. We still want to maintain that this is a fold that comes across. So I've overblended. Let's make sure we continue that dark value shape. That. There we go. Okay. And now I'm going to take, it's not dark, dark anymore. I'm going to take my number two pencil. I'm going to start working some of these shadows, these shadow shapes in and along the jacket. There we go, that looks, yeah, that's looking good. That's what we want. Shadows here, here, even along the dark edge of the jacket. I can leave this pretty light too because we're gonna shade that background next and that's gonna kind of help hide any additional outlines. Notice how I haven't gone in back and outlined anything no outlining. Our focus is purely on getting those value shapes. See, this is one of those moments when I get drawing and I get thinking, I get focusing and I like forget to talk. Some work with the eraser. I also find my eraser is like as good a drawing tool as my pencil. I love to get in there and and draw with the eraser. Okay, I'm gonna go in and add just a little bit of that ribbed texture detail on the sweater's collar. And a little bit on this one too. Okay, 
Now for the background. Okay, um, I'm going to work in a combination of ebony pencil and the regular pencil. And I'm just looking for where I see those subtleties because the background is just kind of like modeled gray value. You could just do a solid gray background. Okay. But uh, in my case, I'm going to try to do something a little bit, a little bit fancier because this is one of my video draw alongs after all, right? I'm going to try to model in some of those darker and lighter tones. Why not? Okay. And take my Take my number two pencil. There for some of the areas of more subtle gray. This is definitely lighter in the background. Where's my chunk eraser? Get that guy. And then I'll use for the background either my Q-tip or my chamois cloth, I think. Here it's kind of like a line of demarcation. It almost goes totally to that subtle gray. I'm just bringing it right up to the edge, outside edge of the hat here. And there it is. Last bit, just the background, right? We want a fully completed drawing. No, just like, hey, the face is done. No, we want to look totally finished. Okay, get in there with my Q-tip, with my blending stump, my chamois cloth. I'm going to kind of like smudge all my little darker areas first and then go for my more in-between spots here. Use my chamois now. And then the last thing I'll do, I'll go back with an eraser. I'll touch up any areas that I've, that I've maybe over blended, I've over smudged into, clean up my borders, things like that. Go back and, you know, recapture. Bless me, the bright white edge of the hair, edge of the hat. Great clean up with the edge of the eraser. Okay. All right, and there it is. There is our two-faced draw along. Let me get all my blending supplies out of the way. Okay, what excellent portraiture work we did together, ladies and gents. There we go. Let me just straighten that out. Perfect. There it is. Okay, you don't need to save this part of your photo anymore. Okay, that can go away. Um, but what I would like you to do is this is a completed beautiful drawing. Give yourself a nice artist signature. And then, of course, make sure um, your name and your class period slash block is on the back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for drawing with me today. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again in Miss Raga's art room.